Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a very interesting blue-red reanimator deck featuring a Dollhouse of Horrors. The 5 mana rare artifact costs 1 mana to tap and activate, exiling a creature card from our graveyard to create a token that's a copy of the exiled card except it's a 0-0 construct artifact in addition to its other types, which gets plus 1 plus 1 for each construct we control. So by itself it starts out as a tiny 1-1, one -one, but the more creatures we reanimate, the bigger the constructs will get, and conveniently we also have some actual construct creatures in our deck, Cityscape Leveler, so if we cast this for 8 mana, it can also grow all the tokens we get from Dollhouse of Horrors, and then the token also gains haste until end of turn, so we can attack with it right away. So Dollhouse is an interesting reanimation effect. The way we get the most out of Dollhouse is by bringing back creatures that benefit from casting other spells alongside them. So typically reanimation effects cost 4 or 5 mana, and that's usually your entire turn, and then you're unable to cast another spell alongside it. With Dollhouse, even though the setup is more expensive, it allows you to reanimate a creature for just 1 mana, and then in the case of Hullbreaker Horror and even Jinga Taxius, we can still cast spells afterwards to immediately get a ton of value. In the case of Jinga Taxius, we can copy the next artifact or instant and sorcery we play, and that can also happen during the opponent's turn, so we can maybe copy two spells in one turn cycle while countering opposing artifacts and instants and sorceries, and then Hullbreaker Horror can potentially bounce opposing permanents, as well as spells that are on the stack to delay any spells the opponent is trying to play, so we can get immediate value from the creature we bring back with our dollhouse, as opposed to just reanimating some of the best creatures in standard, like the Titan of Industry, which would of course be powerful, but doesn't quite synergize as well as some of these other creatures in the deck. And then we also have four copies of Cityscape Leveler from the Brothers War, an 8-8 Trampler, and when we cast it or when it attacks, we can destroy up to one target non-land permanent, its controller generates a tapped Power Stone token in return, and we can also unearth the Leveler for 8 mana from our graveyard, so if we discard it early, we can either bring it back with our Dollhouse, or just pay the 8 mana later in the game to unearth it and get an attack in. So these are the 10 finishers in our deck that we're hoping to discard. Sometimes we can also hard cast them, since we are generating quite a few treasures between Big Score, which will discard a card to draw two and make two treasures, as well as the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, of course. We can generate treasures with a Goblin Shaman token to help us ramp. And then on the second chapter, we can also discard up to two cards and draw that many. So that's another way of discarding our expensive creatures to then set up our Dollhouse of Horrors. We've got additional discard outlets with Thrill of Possibility at two mana to draw two cards, playing this over Bitter Reunion since we can copy Thrill with Jinga Taxius, and being an instant means we can also cast it during the opponent's turn to potentially enable Hullbreaker Horror to counter an opposing spell, so it's a bit more useful there, and we already gain haste of Dollhouse, so the haste from Bitter Reunion wouldn't be all that helpful. And then we also have two copies of Stern Lesson, can draw two and then discard a card, and create a tapped Power Stone token, which we can maybe use to cast our Dollhouse as an artifact, can activate abilities with it, such as maybe unearthing Cityscape Leveler, so we actually have a few ways to make use of Power Stone tokens. And then we also have two copies of Otherworldly Gaze, which we can cast for one mana as maybe a cheap way to enable Hullbreaker Horror, but we can also flash it back from the graveyard, so we don't mind discarding it to our various discard outlets, since we'll still be able to get some value from our graveyard, and that can also mill additional cards into our graveyard to set up our dollhouse or find the missing pieces. Then of course we also need a bit of cheap interaction to stay alive long enough to set up all these synergies, so we've got a few cheap removal spells with Voltage Surge, can also maybe sacrifice an artifact to deal 4 damage, Fading Hope as a bounce spell, got two copies of Fires of Victory, which we can also kick to maybe draw an extra card, and then deal damage to a creature or planeswalker equal to the number of cards in our hand, and then two copies of Twin Shot Sniper, which also has a bit of synergy with our Dollhouse, since we can channel it for one on a red, dealing two damage to any target, and then later still bring it back from our graveyard and deal two more damage, then we can also maybe copy it with the Reflection of Kiki Jiki, so there's a bit of synergy there too, and by channeling we also avoid paying any taxes from Thalia, for instance, which can be helpful against a Blue-Eyed Soldier's deck, and then we also have two sweepers with Brotherhood's End to either deal three damage to each creature and each planeswalker, or destroy all artifacts with mana value three or less, which can also come up. 
And then the mana base only has 22 lands, but that's because we have so many draw and discard effects early on we can cast to make sure we hit our land drops, and then we don't really want to flood out either, and then we still need to have enough expensive creatures to discard to set up our reanimation plan, but I've been pretty happy with the mana configuration as is. Of course, skewed towards red mana, so we can actually cast the double red Brotherhood's End. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand seems a little slow, with no early interaction, no discard outlet for the creatures, even though we have double dollhouse. I think this is a mulligan. This is better. And then Gaze could go, or I could save it to discard to Thrill on two. And then I have to decide if I want to keep Brotherhood's End, or maybe dollhouse. Yeah, discarding Gaze to Thrill could be nice. So maybe I give up on Brotherhood's End and hope we're not up against a, an aggressive deck. Since we're also on the play, that maybe makes it less important for us to keep a sweeper. Okay, opponent on Grixis, so... Shouldn't be too aggressive. So end of turn, discard Gaze, and we've got our third mana for Fable. Picked up some creatures to make use of Dollhouse. Although the Shaman's not long for the world. So I could potentially flash back a Gaze to try and hit my land drop, although we'll also draw from Fable, so I don't think that'll be necessary. Opponent's got their own Fable, so we can deal with the token. And then I may just cast. Twinshot Sniper here if we hit our land drop. Hullbreaker and Dollhouse can be discarded, even though there is the risk of a Corpse Appraiser exiling Hullbreaker. So there is an argument for holding it until I find an instant speed discard outlet later in the game. And then for now just discard double Dollhouse. Sure. Find another Hullbreaker. Okay, so we can cast Twinshot Sniper. Upside of channeling is we get to flashback Gaze to then maybe set up our land drop for Dollhouse. But now we also have a creature we can maybe copy with Reflection. Opponent discarding in a braid, so yeah, might regret discarding two copies of Dollhouse since they might have an answer to the third one. And then Ertai Resurrected also could be used as a counter spell, so their hands probably has quite a bit of interaction. Another Fable for now. Okay. So I'll play Dollhouse, even though I can't activate it yet. Still the most mana efficient play. And then if they take out Dollhouse, maybe I get to use Reflection on Sniper. And then I should put an upkeep stop in case I want to gaze before drawing. Another Ertai discarded. And yep, opponent had another braid for Dollhouse, unfortunately. Okay, we get to untap with Sniper, find Jin. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot we can do at the moment. Can copy Sniper, hoping they don't remove it. And I should probably go for it now before they get to untap with Reflection. Okay, that worked at least. And then I'll be flashing back Gaze end of turn to maybe find a big score, which can maybe help hard cast or seven drops. Shaman attacks. So they haven't shown us any like two damage burn spells that could maybe finish off Sniper, although those could kill Reflection as well. So they probably just need the mana. I think I block. And a Brotherhood sense, our opponent had a sweeper, fair enough. So that will reset the board. And no big score, but a Fable and Stern Lesson. Don't think Stern Lesson is quite as useful, but a Fable seems worth keeping. And then do I want to land afterwards? Yeah, that probably can't hurt, since we're getting to the late game, I don't mind hard casting these. Even though we'll probably discard 
one or two here to the second chapter. So we'll see what the opponent's late game looks like. If it involves Invoke Despair, that could hurt. Jenga Taxis potentially a way to stop that. So I'm going to try and keep that one in hand to just hard cast. Although we've seen Urtai, which can destroy Jin. So, yeah, I think discard one Hullbreaker. <laughs> Find another one. Okay, so now we just want to draw land next turn. And there's the Invoke Despair, which we were fearing. Opponent gets to draw two. And another expensive card that we cannot cast. Disaster. Would have been perfect spot to resolve Jin. There's a Corpse Appraiser, which we were suspecting as well. So yeah, it's tricky to enact our game plan against a mix of removal, graveyard hate, and potentially counter spells as well. Opponent did not pick Shieldred, so their hand must be stacked. Thrill, I'll main phase since I desperately need to hit my land drops. And then I can ditch a Cityscape Leveler. Or another Holebreaker. Leveler potentially gets exiled by another Corpse Appraiser, so that would be a reason to wait on Thrill until the opponent's turn. And I guess I'm still trying to cast a 7-drop next turn, so missed land drop now doesn't really matter, since all our lands are untapped. So I'll wait. Even though we could have maybe picked up something to play at sorcery speed. Still have a lot of instants as well we could cast, like Big Score. Opponent carefully tapping their mana could imply Blade Coil Serpents. And yep, there it is. So now discard Leveler. See what we draw, and there's a big score. So big score, thing discarding Holebreaker. Okay, so next turn I can cast Holebreaker plus Voltage Surge to enable it. Or maybe Jin and then double Voltage Surge. So what we discard? I could discard a land and then still make that play. Even though I lose all my treasures in the process. So maybe the plan now is to cast Jin and then play Voltage Surge sacrificing a treasure so we can take out both Corpse Appraiser and Serpents. And then Big Score would be something great to copy with Jin if it's still around. Okay, I guess we'll go all in on that plan. Since we're taking 9 here, so we need to stabilize. A Leveler also an option, but I'm kind of liking Jin more here. And we'll do this now. So, take out Blade Coil, sacrifice our treasure. So we can also take out Corpse Appraiser. Okay, we're at 7. Invoke Despair, we can counter with Jin, but if they have another cheap instance, they can maybe get that countered instead. Doubling Cityscape Leveler could also be exciting if we draw land. So, yeah, if we get to untap with Jin, we could do some damage. Opponent once again carefully tapping mana, so is this another Blade Coil? But yeah, Jin just counters artifacts, so that's not gonna work. Okay, so big score, discard, probably a leveler at this stage. Although it's a close call, since we can big score again in the opponent's turn, draw a ton of cards. Alright, so no shortage of card draw, and then we'll be able to channel Soaring City as well. Pass it back. So it feels like we're in the driver's seat now. How does our opponent deal with Jinkataxius? Infernal Grasp, step one. So that gets countered. And then go for the throat, which will resolve, so our opponent doesn't take any damage. So step one, big score, discard Sheevan Reef. Draw a few more cards. And then we could use Soaring City to bounce Jin. 
and see if they have more instant speed removal. That works. Okay. Opponent's got three cards left. And next turn we just replay Jin with more instants at the ready. It's a shame we got rid of all those copies of Dollhouse at the start of the game. But there's one left in the deck. 24 cards remaining, so not in danger of decking. And I could copy Twin Shot Sniper or just go for another big score. Yeah, big score plus Jin always feels great. Okay, so any plan to cast Fable? I think I just pass with Fires and Sniper available. Can copy Gaze as well if needed. Opponent cycles a Proving Ground. So we'll see if they can find some threats that can slip through the cracks. It's asking a lot of them to once again answer Jin. They'll need two more removal spells. And then end of turn, probably fine to copy Gaze. Just to try and find a win condition, another leveler for instance. I'll take a Holebreaker Horror. Although there's not many left. Alright, well, backup Jin seems fine, Surge seems fine, and I'll just draw the leveler right now. Could target my own treasures to turn them into power stones. And given the levelers in the graveyard, maybe that's not a bad idea. Okay, hit for five, and our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, so incredibly close game against Grixis, but we managed to stabilize with a timely Jingataxius, copying our Voltage Surge onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands reasonable. We'll need another land, but we've got Fading Hope early on. And uh, might have been reasonable to just play a tapped coast as well, so we can thrill on two. But we're not lacking discard outlets on three and four mana. Pilfer is a good one, so probably takes Fable. Can still cast Gaze to fill the graveyard. And maybe find an untapped land for thrill. So Fable gone. Alright, so we have an untapped land available. Fires of Victory gives us a bit of interaction, so that's not bad. And big score is always reasonable too. So, I like most of these cards. So let's say we keep land on top. Next turn we can Thrill. I think I'm okay keeping Fires. And then maybe a second big score is excessive. And I would rather find a big creature or a dollhouse. Sure. Their opponent knows our hand. Celeste does the play, so it looks like a more controlling black deck. And Thrill at this point could discard Fading Hope since we have Fires as additional interaction. And we can still play a Fable on Curve now. Picked up another big score anyway, so have we bend the other one? If Shieldred shows up. I guess we won't quite be able to kill it with Fires. Liliana instead deals with his Shaman. Fires also damages Planeswalkers. So that could still work. And then for now... What to discard? Maybe still big score plus land. Alright. Definitely have some things we wouldn't mind discarding now. So if Liliana pluses, it's probably not the end of the world. So I'll just play a land and pass. Could have also cast the big score main phase so it didn't transform to night. But now we still have the option of maybe playing a fires if needed. Another pilfer. Alright, well it's big score then. And Holebreaker might be the target here. Fires of Victory, we can also play Kicked next turn to draw a card. So could see them take that as well. 
but now with the treasures we would be able to cast a Hullbreaker next turn. Opponents playing all basic swamps, possible to have Corrupt in their deck as a finisher. Put on getting the Leveler here, somewhat surprising. Could maybe see a Graveyard Trespasser in our future. Just a Bankbuster. Okay. So they are ready to play a long grindy game. We'll see if Liliana pluses or if they want to keep cards in hand. Right, Liliana pluses. So I could just discard land and then next turn I can still play Kicked Fires to take out Liliana. And maybe still hard cast a Hullbreaker if that lines up better. Drop it. Put on getting rid of a Blade Coil which would have been pretty good, making us discard a bunch. Another leveler. Okay. So kicked fires. We'll deal three damage here. And there's our dollhouse. Perfect. So now I wouldn't mind an extra land so we can activate next turn. Gotta dodge another pilfer. Another Liliana. Takes care of reflection most likely. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. <gasps> and our opponent can still draw with a bank buster. Okay. So it looks like we'll get to cast our dollhouse at least. And no shortage of uh, juicy targets in the graveyard as well as in our hands that they may make us discard here. If I discard Hullbreaker, I can also enable it with a uh, gaze. So I guess to diversify, I'll pitch Hullbreaker. Opponent had a march in hand. And shielded their last card, so we can take that out with a leveler. And then attack a Liliana. So it cannot minus two. I think that's the plan. Now the Power Stone token is still somewhat helpful to activate Bankbuster and Celestus, but so be it. Don't mind discarding another leveler to Liliana. And I'll hang on to Gaze to enable Hullbreaker. Okay, opponent can still draw with Bankbuster. And we can take that out as well next turn with a leveler. Ooh, Trespasser, that's a good one. And it is nighttime, so Exile's two cards. Ouch. That was their best possible draw here. Well, now the game may not be over yet. We'll see if they go for double leveler or. So, yeah, double leveler exiled. So we still have Hullbreaker plus Gaze available. So we'll have to put those to use. So. Get back Hullbreaker. And then we can kill Glutton with the Leveler's ability while attacking Liliana. And then I can discard another Leveler to the Ward ability. I'll keep a land in hand in case uh, we pick up another discard outlet like a big score. And then I have a two mana pseudo counter spell here with a Hullbreaker in play. So Bangbuster gets the last card, makes a pilot, which we can maybe bounce as well. Celestis activates. Sir Point's digging. If their removal is go for the throat, both our creatures are artifacts, so that's not going to work. Another Trespasser. Alright, let's uh, counter it while it's on the stack. And then, don't think we need another Dollhouse since we're out of creatures to bring back. So we can put everything in the graveyard here. Crucible, probably not too exciting either. Maybe if the tokens were constructs, I would have kept it. And a Brotherhood's End could destroy artifacts. 
with mana value 3 or less. Mana value here is still 8 and 7. So yeah, that would blow up all the opponent's stuff. So bring back our leveler. And then cast us, destroying all artifacts with mana value 3 or less. And then we can bounce the pilot token as well. Sack for 9. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So very close game here against Mono Black, even defeating Graveyard Trespasser. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is pretty awkward. We've got some nice removal, but we've got these expensive cards with no way of discarding them, no dollhouse in sight. So I think I got a mulligan. This is a bit better. And then Gaze is nice to keep to discard to Thrill. So maybe ditch a Fading Hope. Opponent to red-white. Let's see what flavor. Turn to Bankbuster, so it looks like a more controlling build. Could be an Invoke Justice deck. Could see a Restoration or a Fable on three. Opponent just draws with Bankbuster. Okay. So Thrill, Discard, Gaze. Brotherhood's End could destroy the Bankbuster. And yeah, that seems fine here. And then next turn, big score to keep digging. Haven't found any of our expensive creatures yet. So we're on the lookout for those, as well as, as usual, Dollhouse. Yeah, Companion often played in these Invoke Justice decks. For now we can pass. If our opponent does go for an Invoke Justice to get back Bankbuster, we could still snipe the Companion before it picks up counters. But it doesn't seem to be the case here. I guess there's some black mana too. Alright, so big score. I think I'm still discarding Fading Hope. Another Gaze we don't mind discarding. And I could main phase big score to hit my land drop. Alright, and there's our dollhouse, so just missing a creature now. Even though I guess we could get back a Twin Shot Sniper. Opponent's thinking about leveling a Blast soon. Although our permanents are quite expensive, so I don't think it's a concern. So our opponent's playing the waiting game. They might have a handful of removal, including potentially answers to a dollhouse. Farewell could also be in their deck, and that's certainly very effective against us. So getting a Jenga Taxius in play would be the best way to play around it. It's going to be a Brotherhood's End to destroy all our treasures. So in response, we can float some mana. And then cast another big score afterwards. And I'll discard Voltage Surge. Alright, back up Dollhouse. Possible discarding Sniper was better, so we already set up our current Dollhouse. But now we can play Fable as well. I guess Blast Zone is ready to blow up Fable, but we'll still get some value from it. And a temporary lockdown to go after our treasures once again. Fair enough, so float more mana. And then we'll flash back Gaze. And then, don't mind Stern Lesson. Do I want to land? Sure. Don't need Dollhouse. So I could play a Stern Lesson, discarding maybe a Sniper at this stage, and then play Fable afterwards. And then maybe hang on to my lands in case we need to hardcast some of our 7 drops in case of Farewell 
dealing with our mana sources or dollhouse. Okay, so the game goes on. If our opponent blows a blast zone, they will get their companion back, so they actually get some value. So we still haven't found any of our 10 finishers in the uh, top 23 of our deck. Opponent passes. And uh, do we discard one dollhouse, or do I keep one as insurance in case they answer the first one? And then maybe just ditch a Sheevan Reef anyway. Another dollhouse. Okay, start by attacking. Could see Wandering Emperor, which we can also take out with Fires of Victory. And yep, so if our opponent makes a Samurai, do I kill the Samurai or do I just go after Wandering Emperor itself? I guess I go for the Planeswalker and accept the trade. My right, opponent's going to exile my Shaman. I'll play this Kicked, since I don't want to play another Fable into the Blast Zone. And there's Leveler at long last. Get a Treasure, so I could still flash back a Gaze if I wanted to, to maybe set up Dollhouse next turn to get back Leveler. Still concerned about a potential Farewell. So to gaze or not to gaze. I think I hang on to it. And there's another big score. So do I just play Dollhouse and pass? Do I maybe just pass with a plan of big score and then next turn untap? Dollhouse activate? That plays around farewell the best? Sure. Hard casting leveler with no targets is not particularly exciting, so hopefully our opponent presents something in the next turn. Okay, Wandering Emperor we can try and take out. You started this fight, but I'm going to end Still hoping to find Jingataxius. Holebreaker could also be a way to counter farewell for pretty cheap and make it difficult for the opponent to resolve. Absence goes after Reflection. That works. Can still sacrifice our clue using our Power Stone token as well, so that's nice. And our opponent's gonna go on the beatdown plan. Keep watch for intruders. The Vigilance on the Samurai makes it harder for the leveler to attack Emperor and go unblocked, so... We'll see if we can uh, find another way to answer them. There's Restoration. So now Blast Zone on 3. It's not that threatening since it would also blow up their own restoration. So I'm happy to run out Fable. Alright, so let's uh, maybe draw first with a clue. And then big score. Discard. Could also see discarding a dollhouse and then keep leveler to just hard cast. At this point. And then go after Wandering Emperor, go after Restoration is a question. Restoration could get back a 2-drop, which is Bankbuster. So maybe uh, Restoration's more threatening here. And then the question is whether we want to play a Fable as well, use all our treasures. And since we have a backup, I don't mind. Although now again Blast Zone on 3 becomes more effective. Opponent had another absence. So we're taking a bit of damage of the Samurai, but nothing we cannot overcome. Opponent's down to one card in hand. So the late game seems to favor us. We've got the edge in this fight. Think I can accept the trade here. Try and clear a path for Dollhouse getting back a leveler. And discard probably just two lanes. There's Jin, perfect. Okay, so now I guess Blast Zone eventually could get up to seven to destroy Jin. Um, the Power Stones also help with that. So that's still something we might want to get rid of before getting back Jin, although Dollhouse could eventually get it back too. So we've got quite a few options. 
Dollhouse get back leveler can attack Emperor while killing the Samurai token. So that's maybe a start. And then once we have an active Dollhouse, it's going to be easier to double spell, getting back like a big creature and also casting something. Sniper's interesting too, since that could just take out Wandering Emperor. So maybe that's a good middle ground here. And then we leave Leveler to potentially unearth. And I think I pass to crack the clue as opposed to playing another Fable into the Blast Zone. No attacks. Opponent is looking at Blast Zone, that may go up to 5 to deal with Dollhouse. And then once Blast Zone is gone, it's going to be easier to land Jingataxius and have it stick around. So pretty happy with how we navigated the game so far. We'll see if our opponent can come up with a big heavy hitter here to so still take over. Samurai hits for three, we'll take it. And there goes Blast Zone, that's fine. Got another dollhouse in store. And another leveler. Okay. So step one may be to play Jin, And then we'll be able to copy a leveler once we cast that as well. Can copy Gaze at the very least. And then now I'm less worried about a potential farewell. I won't be attacking with Jin anytime soon to play around Wandering Emperor exiling it. But just having it in play is going to generate a ton of value, even though we've already gone through all the big scores. Opponent might be firing off a removal spell before Jin resolves. Although then they're less likely to be able to answer Jin itself. So Jin resolves. No attacks. And we're about to make a lots of constructs here to grow the sniper as well. Alright, opponent runs out Emperor anyways. counter on Samurai, so that we'll be able to attack past Jin. Could just jump with a Sniper now to preserve our life total, since Leveler will be able to handle the Samurai quite easily. Can copy it with a Reflection too, so we might be able to one-hit KO the opponent, which maybe is an argument for just taking the damage. Remember it's not like our opponent's going to burn us out with Jin in play. Yeah, let's just jump. No need to take any unnecessary risks. So end of turn gaze. And these are all pretty good. So Fallbreaker goes to the graveyard. I can bring it back with a dollhouse. So we'll keep Thrill as a way to enable it. And it's also just good in general with Jin. And then, I guess, one land could be fine. So we can cast Thrill, copy it. Even though we give up on copying our Cityscape Leveler, there's still one in the graveyard we can unearth. And then we can copy that one with Reflection, so we can hit the opponent for uh, 16 Haste Trample damage. Plus 5 from Jin would be 21, so unless they have another Wandering Emperor in hand, this could very well be lethal. So let's go for it. Alright, awesome. So, yeah, very grindy game against Mardu, but eventually we were able to just hardcast our big threats, and that's one of the advantages of having all these expensive cards in the deck to begin with. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems functional. Stern Lesson can discard Jin. Turn 4 maybe already, cast a Dollhouse to activate on the following turn. Turn 3 Fable is also nice, up against a Black-White. 
Make that to Mardu. Turn to Harvester. Oh, still like going for Fable here. And then maybe big score into Dollhouse activates. Harvester takes out our Shaman. And opponent's got their own Fable. Okay, so what to discard here? Could ditch Stern Lesson since we have a big score to cast instead. And then maybe a land as well. And then end of turn I'll big score discarding Jin. So we play around some graveyard hate potentially. Okay. So we'll pass it back. Opponent will get to make a treasure here, but that's alright. So they appear to be a mid-range deck. Not sure what the top end looks like. They have a lot of white mana. Another harvester for now. That is a way for them to kill Jin if we bring it back. So that might have to be taken out. Okay. So if I go for a Dollhouse, I can activate it and still have access to Fading Hope, which gets doubled by Jin. So that sounds pretty nice. And then next turn, hopefully, double a big score as well. Opponent might respond with removal, but they don't. And then now, Fading Hope. Shaman token and Harvester. And don't think I need to keep Mountain on top. Another Dollhouse doesn't seem necessary, although it is possible they have answers for my current Dollhouse. So I guess we'll keep it on top and then if we still have our original one I can still discard to big score if needed. And I guess we'll attack for one. Might have been a mistake to attack if our opponent has a Ganjo in hand to deal 4 damage, since they have a treasure here. So our opponent activates their blood tokens to go digging. The fact that all our spells here are instants means we can also maybe double in the opponent's turn. Oof, Archangel of Wrath sadly kills Jin. No, goes for Reflection. That's surprising. So yeah, we can double big score and then double fires in the opponent's turn. So I think big score now. Discarding a leveler, which we can also bring back potentially. That's a lot of value. Okay, so I can play my land out still. And then activate Dollhouse, bring back Leveler. And then I don't have to attack right now, since I would be able to take out their creatures anyway next turn. I guess I get a chance to copy Archangel, but it's not going to be kicked. So, yeah, let's just uh, pass here, and then in their upkeep, I can Fires of Victory. Could also wait to play Fires Kicked. Although, next turn we can maybe just double cast a leveler as well. So, no shortage of uh, powerful plays available. Put on Dusk Copy Archangel. Okay. Take three. Opponent's got four mana to work with, so they wouldn't be able to play another Kicked Archangel. So just a Harvester. Okay. Well, let's have some fun here. Double Leveler. Thanks to Jin. Only get one trigger since we only cast one, but that's enough to kill Harvester. 
Get two more constructs to grow our current creatures, and our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. A bit light on interaction, perhaps, but still gonna keep. Turn 3 Fable maybe sets up a turn 4 Dollhouse. And then we're just missing some expensive creatures to put in our graveyard. Opponent Mono Black so far. Turn 2 Underdog. Okay, so... Can Thrill, maybe discarding a land here. And hope we're not under too much pressure. Alright, there's our Cityscape Leveler to discard. And can probably ditch an extra Dollhouse since Mono Black doesn't really have answers to artifacts once they're in play. The Shaman probably gets answered. Got a Bounce Spell for Shieldred if that shows up to buy some time. So we can still draw cards without taking a ton of damage. So I'll take three. And there's a Liliana instead to answer the Shaman. Fair enough. Another Dollhouse. So I could hang on to Leveler for a little bit longer in case your opponent has a Graveyard Trespasser to exile from the Graveyard. And then we might pick up an Instant Speed Discard Outlet instead. Or I can just discard it to another Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which I'm about to play. Alright, big score, that works. So, pass with big score up, discarding whatever creature we want to reanimate, and then next turn we can bring it back with a dollhouse already. And there's a trespasser, so good thing we didn't discard our creature beforehand. Opponent not activating Liliana, so they're happy with their hand. And then, problem now is they have a blocker in the form of Trespasser, although we could take it out with the Cityscape Leveler. Hullbreaker is going to be better once we can also cast another spell alongside it, which currently I guess I would be able to if I draw land, because then we can play Dollhouse, activate it, and still Fading Hope, which would then trigger Hullbreaker Horror. That's interesting here. If I go for Leveler, then I can attack, kill Trespasser, and discard. Which is also pretty decent. Yeah, I think I still hang on to Hullbreaker. Did not find the lands. Now we did. Okay, so Dollhouse. Activate. Bring back Leveler. And that's gonna take out Trespasser and Liliana. Now we do have to discard, and once again I'm tempted to hang on to Hullbreaker in case of another Trespasser. Since we can discard it to a big score next turn. So either let go of Fable or Big Score. And uh, let's get rid of Big Score since Fable could be useful against Invoke Despair. Okay, and then next turn, if we can also get a Hullbreaker online, that's going to be glorious. For now, Grasp deals with our Leveler. If they had a go for the Throat instead, that would not have worked. Underdog hits for three. Alright, we can get double Hullbreaker Horror online now. So we'll discard Horror. Jinga Tax is also great. So bring back Hullbreaker. And then I don't have to copy it right now. Can just attack and then maybe end of turn copy Hullbreaker. And we essentially have a counter spell at instant speed with Fading Hope. Could also just cast Jinga Taxius next turn. Opponent goes for Infernal Grasp on Reflection. So a few ways we could handle this. I don't mind just copying Hullbreaker and then Fading Hope on Underdog. And then we can send back the Infernal Grasp. 
as well as the Power Stone token. And then I'll have to replay Infernal Grasp. And we'll bottom the Fable. Opponent still goes after Reflection, so we get to keep Hallbreaker. And now we're pretty far ahead on board. So I can just cast Jingitaxius, which will blank their future removal spells. If they still somehow kill it, we'll bring it back with a Hallbreaker. And nothing to bounce. So now if they have Invoke Despair in hand, it's not going to be very effective. Alright, so we got to see our Dollhouse Reanimator deck in action, and it seems to fare pretty well against most of the mid-range decks in the format, since we have just enough interaction to keep up, and then our late game tends to be more powerful than whatever the opponent is doing. Now against aggro decks, our deck is probably going to struggle, a deck like Mono Red is going to be pretty hard to beat, since they'll probably have enough damage before we manage to enact our powerful late game, and a deck like Mono Blue with enough counter spells is also going to be tricky to actually resolve a Dollhouse, even though eventually Hullbreaker is an uncounterable threat, so trying to hardcast Hullbreaker is probably our best chance in that matchup. Blue White Soldiers I could also see being tricky with an early Thalia, even though a Twin Shot Sniper is a way to kill it without getting taxed, so there's definitely some tricky matchups out there, but if you expect a lot of mid-range decks, this could very well be a fun choice. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.